Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about something a little bit different from normal. So I'm going to be looking at the potential problems with thermoluminescent stating. Now thermoluminescent stating isn't as popular or well known as some other types of dating methods like radiocarbon dating or tree ring dating, but it's something which is widely used. So uh, it's important to know its reliability. So a lot of people have a natural tendency to think that any scientific dating method is 100% accurate or near enough, but actually there can be some serious problems with some of them. So I'm going to explain first of all how thermoluminescent dating works and hopefully I'll be able to do this uh, as simply as possible. So thermoluminescent dating is based on the principle that in the ground from which pottery is made, there's quartz. Now quartz has what are called electron traps, basically tiny, tiny cracks, so small that electrons that come from radioactive material get trapped in them. So from the radioactive material in the ground, the quartz over time gradually accumulates more and more electrons because the electrons are fired off by the radioactive material and then they get caught in the electron traps in the quartz. So over time, the quartz accumulates more and more electrons until it's finally saturated with it. But that takes a very, very long time. So when pottery is made, that obviously involves heating uh, the clay from the ground, which is where the, the quartz is found, up to higher than 400 degrees Celsius. Now when that happens, that releases the electrons because it gives them the energy they need to, to, uh, to be released from the electron traps. So we can see the clock, as it were, is set back to zero when the pottery is made. And then after the pottery is discarded and it, it rests in the ground again, it starts accumulating these electrons again because it's once again surrounded by the radioactive material in the ground. So over time, it accumulates more and more electrons. And obviously, depending on how long it's been since it was discarded, that will, uh, that will determine how many electrons it has. So when modern archaeologists find a piece of pottery, they can take it to the laboratory and they can heat it up to above 400 degrees Celsius, and then the electrons will be released. Now, when this happens, the pottery gives off light, visible light. And that's why it's called thermoluminescence, because it involves heating the pottery and then seeing the light that results. The amount of light that results obviously depends on the uh, amount of electrons that have become accumulated in the pottery, and that is determined by how long it's been since it was discarded. So by measuring the light that's given off when the pottery is heated, the scientists are able to work out how long it's been since that pottery was discarded. In other words, how old the pottery is. So that's the theory that's involved in thermoluminescence dating, but it's actually uh, a little bit more complicated than that. There are some potential problems with it. So one potential problem is that the number of electron traps in any given uh, piece of pottery is not necessarily the same as the number of electron traps in any other given piece of pottery. And it's the number of electron traps that determine how many electrons it's able to hold. So if you have one piece of pottery that has far more electron traps than another piece of pottery, and then you measure the light that's given off, the one which has more electron traps will obviously give off more light than the one with fewer electron traps, simply because that's able to hold more electrons. So to be able to accurately work out how old the pottery is, they need to do something else as well. After heating the pottery up and measuring the light that's given off, they then uh, kind of infuse it with more radiation, artificial radiation, and then they heat it up again to see how much light is given off. So then they're able to work out how, basically how many electrons it accumulates per dose of radiation it receives. And then they're able to then look at the result from the original test and then judge how old the pottery must have been, how much time must have passed for it to be able to accumulate 
the correct number of electrons. And so, in theory, they're, they're able to account for the differences in electron traps in different pieces of pottery, although obviously every extra step that's necessary to get an accurate result is, a, is another potential error. But in theory, that should work. But there's a bigger problem. You see, the radioactive material in one given location is not necessarily the same as the amount of radioactive material in another given location. And they can vary dramatically. It's by no means uniform around the Earth. So in one particular location, it can be as much as a hundred times higher than in another location. So scientists need to, uh, to, to measure the surrounding area, the radioactivity of the surrounding area in which the pottery was found to see what the actual dosage of radiation actually is in that area. Otherwise, they'll have no idea how long the, uh, the pottery would have had to have rested, rested in the ground to accumulate that much, that many electrons, because it's entirely dependent on how many electrons are given off by the ground, which varies from one place to the other. You, you see the problem. So scientists need to measure the area, the environment in which the pottery was found to be able to have anything even approaching an accurate date for the pottery. But see, here comes a big issue. If, for whatever reason, a, a piece of pottery was moved from the location in which it had been resting for a long time, then that could completely skew the date. You see, imagine if a piece of pottery was resting in the ground for, let's say, a few hundred years or even more than a thousand years, and then something happened like a storm or an earthquake or maybe raiders, anything like that, anything that would move it from one location to another location, the, the new location's radioactivity levels could be dramatically different from where it had been for a lengthy period of time. Now, if the radioactivity levels only, uh, only varied slightly, that probably wouldn't be a big issue. But like I said, they can vary dramatically. One place can be a hundred times more radioactive than another place. So this really is a very big issue. And in addition to that, one single location can have its radioactivity levels change over time due to leaching through various factors such as water, for example, flooding can cause the radioactivity levels to be leached from the ground. So again, scientists looking at the environment now could think, oh, well, it would have taken X number of years for the piece of pottery to build up that, that many electrons because the radioactivity levels are such and such. But if in the past the radioactivity levels were higher dramatically, which is possible, then that would mean that the piece of pottery would actually have needed to have been sitting in that area for a much, much shorter period of time than the modern day scientists would calculate. But these are simply unknown factors. You can't, you can't adjust for factors that you simply have no way of knowing about. So there are some really significant issues with thermoluminescence dating, even in, uh, in samples of pottery that have been found close together there can be some serious errors involved. For example, I read one paper about the dating of Celtic pottery. Now this pottery came from early Celtic graves, so it was dated to about two and a half thousand years ago on an archaeological basis. And most of the pottery samples did date to two and a half thousand years ago, uh, based on thermoluminescence as well. So that, that clearly was more or less accurate. However, at least one of the samples of pottery measured to over seven and a half thousand years old, which obviously is complete nonsense. And it, it's from the same group of pottery samples as all the others. So this is an outlier. Imagine that two and a half thousand years was the correct date and it measured to seven and a half thousand years old. So again, we can't simply just accept thermoluminescence dates as infallible. There are some serious problems, which mean that it's inevitable that sometimes it will be wrong dramatically because leaching does happen, but we simply have no way of knowing if it happened in any given location or not. 
So let's not put too much weight on thermoluminescence dating, although it is obviously a valuable tool.